ما شك ولا ريب ان الحديث عن الحجاب محتاج الى محاضرات كثيره فاذا رايتم ان نفرد ذلك في محاضره لانه لو تكلمنا الان المحاضره القادمه يقول لكن اريد ان انهي كلامي فاقول ان الطب النبوي وجد عنايه علمائنا من القديم فاول رساله الفت في الطب رساله علي الرضا سنه 90 للهجره ثم عبد الملك بن حبيب سنه في القرن الثالث الهجري وهكذا تتابع التاليف فيما يسمى بالطب النبوي فكانت الاحاديث ضمن كتب السنه ثم افردت تحت ما يسمى بالطب النبوي فالفت عشرات الكتب والمصنفات في الطب النبوي ومن ابخمها كتاب امين عين في الطب النبوي في مجلدين ولا يعني يخفى ان الامام ابن القيم الجوزيه له كتاب الطب النبوي ضمن كتابه الموسوعي زاد المعاد في هدي خير العباد ولقد اعتنى الصحابه رضي الله عنهم بالطب وتلقوه عن نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فهذه عائشه الصديقه رضي الله عنها كانت بصيره بالطب يقول لها هشام بن عروه يا خاله ما ابصرك ما ابصرك بالطب يعني من اين لك هذه المعرفه بالطب؟ كانت عائشه من المؤمنين طبيبه فقالت يا يا ابن اخي كانت الوفود تاتي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فتنعت يعني تصف الدواء فكك من ثم وفي روايه عنها ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يمرض احد من اهله او من الصحابه فكان يصف له فمن ثم تعلمت رضي الله عنها من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والامام الشافعي كان طبيبا الامام الشافعي يقول رحمه الله العلم علمان علم الاديان وعلم الابدان، علم الاديان علم الاديان هو علم الشريعه، وعلم الابدان هو علم الطب. وقال يا لها في على علم الطب ضيعه المسلمون تركوه لليهود والنصارى. تركوه لليهود والنصارى، وقال لا اعلم علما انبل بعد علم الفقه من علم الطب. ولما ورد الى مصر نظره طبيب مصري فوجده عالما في الطب فقال ظننت انه لا يعرف الا الطب فاراد ان يقرا عليه كتاب بقراط في الطب فقال له اشار الى المسجد قال انهم لا يتركونني يعني طلاب العلم ينتظرونه ليعلمهم الفقه والحديث الشاهد ان طب الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام الحمد لله مؤصل وفيه كتب كثيرة وأبحاث ولكن للأسف لا زالت لا زال المسلمون يعزفون في عزوف وبعد عن هذا الطب اللي هو في الحقيقة يعني معجزة العصر هناك إذا جاءت مستعصية أعيت الأطباء وجد لها وجد لها علاجات من خلال طب الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام ومن خلال الطب النبوي. اني لارجو الله عز وجل ان يكون هناك اهتمام وعنايه بهذا الطب وان نرجع الى الطبيعه ونرجع الى الاحاديث والايات القرانيه فنجد فيها حل لمشاكلنا وعلاج لادوائنا وامراضنا وبكلفه يعني يسيرا وعلاج غير علاج مهموم الغوائل ليس له غوائل واضرار كالعلاجات الكيماويه وغيرها التي يعني افسدت واضرت اكثر مما نفعت اسال الله العظيم رب العرش الكريم ان يفقهنا في الدين وان يعلمنا التاويل وأن يجعلنا ممن ينتفعون بهذا ويستفيدون من هذا العلم وممن يأخذون به 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الشيخ said that the topic يعني is is big but then he said إن شاء الله the topic will be in the next lecture but the prophetic medicine has found care and diligence from our scholars since the old times the early scholars they gave attention to this the شيخ said that one of the first books uh, regarding this uh, is authored by uh, Ali Arida in the year 90 of the Hijra, then the book by Abdul Malik ibn Habib in the 3rd century of the Hijra, then uh, a lot of books were authored uh, about the prophetic uh, medicine, the Ahadith, they were in the books of Hadith, uh, but then they were uh, separated or they were uh, collected from the different books of hadith and uh, they were put in one uh, book or they were put in uh, like single books speaking about the hadith uh, pertaining to medicine the chef said that one of the big books that were offered in this or the biggest one is the book uh, medicine by uh, Abu Mu'ayn and uh, it is well known that Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah also um, he uh, wrote on this subject and this uh, hit what his writing is found within his uh, book called uh, Zad al-Ma'ad the companions of Allah anhum used to uh, care about uh, medicine also the prophetic medicine Aisha radiallahu anha she was uh, considered uh, a specialist uh, in this and Hisham ibn Uwa uh, asked uh, Aisha radiallahu anha what made you uh, have knowledge uh, of this of this medicine so she said that a lot of delegations used to come to the Prophet sallallahu and they used to describe uh, different types of medicine to him so from there she took that and she learned it she learned it uh, in another narration, uh, she said that uh, one of the members of the household of the Prophet ﷺ used to get sick and uh, the Prophet ﷺ would prescribe uh, some sort of medicine for him. She said, I used to learn that. I used to learn that. Uh, Imam al-Shafi'i, the Sheikh said, uh, he used to be a medical doctor himself. He used to say that the knowledge is of two types the knowledge of the religion, that is the Sharia, the Islamic law, and the knowledge of the bodies, and this is the uh, medicine. Then, uh, Shafi used to say, uh, he used to feel regret, or like he used to feel pitiful for the science of medicine that the Muslims left, they did not give it uh, due uh, attention. Uh, he said, uh, it is unfortunate that they left it. This is still the statement of the Shafi'i. He felt pitiful that the Muslims left that to the Jews and the Christians. And uh, also Imam Shafi'i is reported to have said, I do not know uh, a branch of knowledge that is more noble uh, or that is noble uh, after fiqh, after the knowledge of the Sharia. I do not know a branch of knowledge that is more noble than medicine. The Sheikh said that when Al Imam Shafi'i moved to Egypt, he had a debate with an Egyptian doctor and he was strong and he beat him in that uh, debate. And uh, that Egyptian doctor, he said that I thought that a Shafi'i does not know except this. He thought that this was the only specialty he had and that Egyptian doctor he said, he asked an Imam Shafi'i uh, for him to study under him the book, one book of medicine written by uh, Bukhrat. This is one of the Greek, uh, well-known Greek uh, doctors. Uh, so, uh, Imam Shafi'i told him that those, he pointed to the students of knowledge, 
of the Sharia. And as he said, those, they will not leave me, they will not let me uh, teach you this or study this. Uh, they, they will not let me teach you this. Uh, you can study under me. The Sheikh said that uh, we must uh, give due care and attention to the prophetic medicine, especially that it has become the miracle of our time. The prophetic medicine is the miracle of our time because then in it uh, we found cures for uh, sicknesses that uh, there is no cure for. It. And these cures are found in the prophetic uh, medicine. And uh, the Sheikh said that he hopes that uh, we we'll find more care given to the prophetic medicine. We should go back, refer to the ayat and the hadith, and try to find sicknesses for us, uh, cures for our sicknesses. Uh, those cures that we can get them with a low cost, and also the cures that we get from the prophetic medicine does not have do not have side effects, unlike those chemicals chemical products that are used in the medicine, uh, the prophetic medicine does not have uh, side uh, effects. Uh, and then at the end, the Shaykh uh, made dua for himself and for all of us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer his dua. And uh, right now, in, uh, in after the, the following lecture will be after us, and inshallah. Any questions, inshallah? We have a few questions. I found this This is uh, the brother brought this. Uh, it talks about diabetes. Good news for the people who are sick with uh, diabetes. The Sheikh said that uh, I know this uh, this thing from like about 30 years. Uh, some people used it and it benefited them. Some uh, did not benefit from it. So basically, uh, uh, can be used basically and. May help some people. Try it. He said, try it. It may help. Try it. It may help. Inshallah. Hundred grams of flour. Hundred grams. 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 It's just a matter of uh, knowing the exact uh, names for these things. You know, this, if we can get the right name, then it will be fine. So, but it may help some people. Fatah. I think uh, instead of uh, going to Aashab, not in Aashab, then it's the same. Are there books that are offered that are small and simple that can be used within the home uh, that will not make us in need of going to specialists or you know places Herbal. where herbalists, right? That's the question I'm going to actually do then. كتب كثيرة ينفع للبيت يعني كتب كثيرة لكن هي المشكلة في معرفة الأعشاب أما الأعشاب المتداولة في المطبخ فالكل يعرفها مثلا الكمون معروف الأقدوس معروف الكزبرة معروفة الهيل معروف الحبة السوداء معروفة القرنفل المعروف أما في عندك أشياء أعشاب لا يعرفها حتى العطارين أنفسهم the Sheikh said, the Sheikh said that uh, there are many uh, books that are available, but then the problem is actually in getting to know 
the right herb because there are herbs that are well known the Sheikh mentioned like cumin like parsley uh, like uh, cardamom like the black seed like the cloves there are herbs that are widespread and the people know them but then there are certain herbs that may be mentioned in these books that even the people who work in these stores that sell herbs they might not know exactly and they might give you the wrong herb so that's where the problem is otherwise there are certain there are a number of books that are there the knowledge of herbs it means long experience long experience أما هناك أعشاب متداولة في بلادنا مثل بيرمية الجادة الزعترة هذه أشياء يعرفها صغير والكبير وتستعمل لمعه العلاجات غازات مغص كذا نعم الشيخ said that the issue is knowing you need to have long experience with these birds how to save them knowing what is uh, good, uh, still fresh or still effective, and what got uh, corrupt from these herbs, knowing the right amounts that you should be using in the mix that you will take. Uh, that's, that's the issue there. Uh, there is a problem with this. You need to refer to someone who knows. Otherwise, the chef even mentioned more uh, herbs that are widely used and widely known and that are used and you will find it in, within your household, you have it. And these, some of these herbs are used for some cures like from gases or some from um, stomach, uh, stomach ache and the likes of that. Yes? Is there a natural medicine for constipation? Staying away from overeating also. The reason for constipation is overeating and not moving. 
overeating and not moving uh, a lot. And also uh, not using the short. Uh, also, uh, the reason for constipation other than overeating and not moving uh, the uh, not using the foods that has aliyaf will help me with the aliyaf. Rafik. Hmm? Fibers. Fibers. Right. The foods that don't have fibers. Um, the chef said the, the um, also the, the black bread and you know, the barley, the brown uh, made from barley, that helps also to remove that. And the white bread, he said, it causes constipation. The white bread causes constipation. Alhamdulillah, illallah. أشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين والتابعين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. إن شاء الله we continue with our Sheikh Awanas Muhammad Musa Masrah رحمه الله. He will continue speaking about the issue of the hijab or cutting. إن شاء الله. Today we will end at Maghrib. إن شاء الله. So the Sheikh will give his lecture. Hopefully there will be some time left for a few questions and answers. And we'll end at Salatul Maghrib, inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, the schedule for uh, the week, tomorrow, Monday, between Maghrib and Isha, at IMO, International Muslim Organization, that's there in Islington. Tuesday, he's in uh, Halton Islamic Center in Burlington. Wednesday, Jami Mosque, between Maghrib and Aisha. Thursday, Abu Huraira Center between Maghrib and Aisha. Friday, Salat al Jumu'ah will be here. Then, lecture between Maghrib and Aisha here at QSS. And then, the Saturday and Sunday also at QSS. The topic for the following weekend is protecting yourself from the jinn and the shayateen and sorcery and evil eye, inshallah. على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فموضوع حديثنا هو تتميم لما تقدم من كلامنا حول مقدمات في الطب وبيان أهمية الطب خصوصا طب الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام وهو ما يسمى بالطب النبوي او ما يعبر عنه احيانا بالطب الاسلامي ولا شك ولا ريب ان الحجامه من ابرز واهم طب الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام فان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد أوصى أمته بالحجامة في عشرات الأحاديث، أحاديث الحجامة بلغت مبلغ التواتر، والحجامة سنة نبوية أمر بها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم، وأمرته بها ملائكة السماء ليلة المعراج قد قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ما مررت بملأ من الملائكة ليلة المعراج إلا قالوا يا محمد مر أمتك بالحجامة وهذا يدل على أهمية هذه السنة وعلى أهمية الاستطباق بالحجامة وإن كان الاستطباب بالحجامة هو أحد قواعد طب الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم الثلاثة الذي تقدم الحديث عنها وهو استفراغ المادة الفاسدة فمعلوم أن الدم إذا تبيض 
فقتل الإنسان إذا هاج الدم وتغير وتجلط فإنه يقتل الإنسان ولا بد لهذا الدم أن يكون رقيقا وأن يكون منسابا في العروق بشكل اعتيادي فإذا هاج أو صعب جريانه في العروق وكان هناك تضيق في هذه العروق بسبب الترسبات على جدران العروق فإنه يؤدي إلى ذبحة صدرية ويؤدي إلى جلطة دماغية أو قلبية وبالتالي يؤدي إلى والعياذ بالله شلل الإنسان أو إلى وفاته الحجامة أيها الإخوة من الطب النبوي الوقائي فإن طب الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام كما تقدم إما أن يكون حفاظا على الصحة الموجودة أو دفعا للعلل الدائمة وهو ما يسمى بالحمى عن المؤذي أو استفراغا للمادة الفاسدة وأحد هذه الاستفراغات يكون بالحجامة من خلال إخراج الدم الذي يشكل عبئا على الجسد المليء بالشوائب الدم المستهلك الذي يشبه زيت السيارة حينما يحترق ويصبح غير فاعل في هذه السيارة فلا بد من نضحه واستبداله بزيت جديد وهكذا هذا الدم يخرج ويتجدد دم الإنسان بما يشبه الفلترة الفلترة النبوية الربانية لهذا الجسم من خلال نزح الدم المستهلك المحتوي على خلايا هرمة وشوائب ورواسب فينزح هذا الدم ويلقى ليتجدد تتجدد خلايا الجسم وتتجدد كريات الدم الحمراء ويتجدد هذا الدم فيكون أكثر صفاء ونقاء وحيوية فيبقى الإنسان يتمتع بالصحة والعافية ولهذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أهرق من هذه الدماء من أهرق من هذه الدماء فلا يضر فلا يضره أن يتداوى من شيء لشيء يعني لا يضره أن يتداوى لأي داء ما دام أنه يهريق من هذه الدماء عن طريق الحجامة قلت إن الحجامة من الطب النبوي الوقائي واستعملته الشعوب والأمم سابقا وقديما فهو قديم قبل الميلاد استعمله الصينيون استعمله اليونانيون استعمله الفراعنة واستعمله العرب في الجاهلية وجاء الإسلام فأكد على الحجامة وثبتها وكانوا يحتجمون بطرق بدائية يستخدمون قرون الأمقار والجواميس وكان الصينيون يستخدمون خشب البامبو كانوا يغلونه بالعشاب ويضعونه على الجسم ليسحب البرودة من أجسامهم ويحرك أو ينشط أماكن الطاقة في أجسامهم وأيضا استعمله اليونانيون لاعتقادهم أنه منفذ لخروج الأرواح الشريرة من أبدانهم كانوا 
يجعلون ثقوبا ونزفا في الجسم بزعمهم لمرور وخروج الارواح الشريرة او الشياطين لا شك ولا ريب ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم استعمل الحجامة وامر بالحجامة وامر بالحجامة كما قلنا امر بالحجامة ليلة المعراج فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رجع من هذه الرحلة المباركة بعافية الروح وعافية البدن عافية الروح هي هذه الصلاة التي هي معراج المؤمن هذه الصلاة التي هي صلة بين العبد وربه هذه الصلاة التي كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ارحنا بها يا بلال ورجع بعافية الأبدان هذه الحجامة الصلاة تلقاها من الله مباشرة بلا واسطة يعني ليس هناك أحد لا جبريل ولا غيره كان وسيطا بين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وبين وحي الصلاة وإنما تلقاها من الله مباشرة والحجامة تلقاها وأمر بها بواسطة ملائكة السماء وهذا يدل على أن الملائكة حريصة على الخير لأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنها تحب أمة محمد وترجو لها السلامة لأنها خير أمة أخرجت للناس ولأنها ولأن نبيها خير نبي أرسله الله إلى الخلق هناك بالطبع طبعا تعريف للحجامة الحجامة مأخوذة من الحجم وهو المص وتسمى الأكواب التي توضع على الموضع الذي يراد حجمه بالمحاجم أو المحجمة وقد يطلقون المحجمة على المشارط على المشارط يعني الشفرات أو أدوات الشرط الذي يشرطون به الجلد لأن الحجامة على نوعين حجامة رطبة وهي الحجامة المعهودة النبوية المصحوبة بالتشريط يوضع يعني كانوا زمان قديما يضعون المحاجم ويمشونها ثم يغلقون فينتفخ هذا الجلد ثم يرفعون ويشطبون ويعيدون الكرة فيمتص هذا الدم تلقائيا بسبب تفريغ الهواء فيمتلئ ويكبونه يسكبونه ثم يعيدون الكرة وفي الهند وفي الهند كانوا يستخدمون ولا زالوا دودة اسمها دودة العلق هذه الدودة دودة عندها قدرة على يعني التمدد وهي تشبه الاسطوانة فهي تستوعب كمية كبيرة من الدم مولعة بمص الدم كان يضعون على موضع الألم الذي يريدون حجمه فتأخذ بمص الدم من هذا الموضع حتى تنتهي كلما امتلأت أفرغوها ثم أعادوها وهكذا هناك طرق كثيرة للحجامة وكانوا يستخدمون أيضا الأكواب الزجاجية يحرقون ورقة أو قطعة من القطن أو في داخلها ويضعونها على الموضع فتحترق هذا النار يحترق الداخل فيحرق الأكسجين وبالتالي يكون هناك تفريغ يكون هناك تفريغ فتلتصق أو تتمكن هذا الكوب تمكن هذا الكوب من المكان فينتفخ الموضع ويصير هناك تفريغ ثم يرفعونها ويشطبون ثم يعيدون الكرة مرة أخرى وهكذا إلى أن خرجت هذه الماكينات الخاصة بالتفريغ وهي يعني في الحقيقة يعني ماكينة خاصة لعلها أحدكم رواها يعني تشبه
الحقيقة يعني كنا نود لو لو في مكينة حجامة حتى نحن نشتغل عليها لكن يعني هذه أبواب خاصة في معها مكينة يدوية تفرغ الهواء تضع على المكان ثم تترك ثم تعاد الكرة يكون تشطيب ويخرج الدم كما ترون هكذا هذه الأقوال ثم يكون التشطيب ثم تعاد توضع فيكون مص الدم ما ثلاث مرات أقلها ثلاثا إلى سبع مرات هذه العملية ف يعني يكون الدم قد فرغ من هذا المكان ويكون يعني هنا يكون الدم قد خرج من المكان وبالتالي يشعر المريض براحة و يعني ربما يت... النتائج تكون سريعة وعاجلة وتأخرت فلن تتأخر أكثر من 24 ساعة يشعر المريض بالراحة. Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying salat and salam to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sheikh said that our topic uh, is a continuation uh, of what we started uh, speaking about introductions to medicine, its importance, especially the prophetic medicine or uh, the uh, Islamic medicine as it may be uh, called. Uh, there is no doubt that. Uh, cupping is one of the most important uh, types of medicine that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used. He alayhi salatu wassalam, uh, advised his ummah to perform hijama in tens of ahadith and the ahadith of hijama reached the level uh, that the scholars of hadith call uh, tawatu which is, which means that basically uh, this is something that is reported from the Messenger وسلم, that there is no doubt uh, about it basically because it is reported to us by many directors over uh, the different generations and uh, those uh, reporters they cannot uh, gather together online so the point is basically here, uh, what concerns us here regarding the word the water is that it is reported without uh, doubt that the Messenger وسلم, used this and was uh, teaching this. This is a sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that the Prophet وسلم, uh, ordered the Muslims to use and also the angels uh, of the heavens they ordered the Prophet وسلم, to use it during the night of Al-Mi'raj. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, I never passed by a group of angels uh, at the night of Al-Mi'raj, except that they said, O oh Muhammad, order your ummah to perform cupping. And this shows the importance of seeking a healing through the uh, hijama. Uh, so, al hijama, the Sheikh said, is one of the uh, principles of the prophetic medicine, the three principles that were mentioned before, and that is the principle of extracting the corrupt uh, substances or liquids or materials from the body. Uh, here it refers to uh, the, the blood. The blood, if it becomes bad or corrupt, then uh, it would harm. It would harm uh, the body. 
the Sheikh said that the blood should be thin and should be flowing easily in the veins and the arteries. So if there was some sort of uh, some sort of clogging uh, somewhere because of uh, the uh, blood clotting or the clots of blood that stay on the sides uh, of the veins or the arteries, uh, then this will lead to uh, basically the blockage of the uh, blood. It will not flow easily, it may stop, and this may lead to, if this happens, this may lead to uh, paralyzation or death. So, al hijama or cupping is from the prophetic medicine that is the preventative prophetic medicine. Because the prophetic medicine, as was mentioned before, is either preservation or keeping and safeguarding the health that's already present or um, repelling or preventing the body from taking uh, materials or foods that are harmful to it or the third is extracting the bad uh, corrupt substances from the body now the hijama cupping is basically extracting the used up blood the used up blood this blood the sheikh said we can give an example to it uh, the bad blood that is is like the car the motor oil the motor oil when it burns and it becomes ineffective uh, then you have to throw that uh, oil and then you have to replace it with new oil likewise the blood this is what the cupping does to it uh, in a way uh, this cupping will serve as a filtration she called it lordly of bani uh, filtration or prophetic uh, filtration and that is by taking out the bad blood and, and throwing it this bad blood containing bad uh, or corrupt cells so this is thrown out so the blood will make up new uh, blood cells and there will be new blood uh, and this way the blood will become more clear, more pure, and more uh, dynamic. Uh, and the person will enjoy uh, health uh, and be safe and sound. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, the one who uh, extracts and throws out of this blood then it won't uh, so he will not need if he performs cupping in this way throwing out the bad blood the one who throws out of this blood bad blood then he wouldn't be in need of seeking a cure from a disease the one who does cupping he will not be in need of seeking a cure or medicine from a disease meaning this uh, this uh, issue or this uh, cupping will cleanse the body and therefore he wouldn't be falling sick so al hijama cupping is part of the preventative prophetic medicine and the uh, different nations they have used it uh, long time ago, uh, ancient uh, people and civilizations, they used that. Uh, the Chinese, the Greek, the Pharaohs, the Arab in the uh, Jahiliya pre-Islamic time, they used this. And Islam came and emphasized and affirmed the usage of al-hijama or cupping. And a uh, long time ago, they used to use uh, some sort of primitive type of means uh, for cupping uh, instruments uh, that they used to use or tools. Uh, they used to use the horns of uh, cows. They, the Chinese the Chinese used the 
uh, bamboo uh, type of uh, wood. They use bamboo. Um, they would um, boil it along with some herbs and then they put it on the body to cool off. They put, they put it on the body in order to cool off the body and also to bring or to revive uh, and to bring uh, active uh, activity or dynamism to the places where they put it on. They, they, they put it on the places of, of, of energy, he said, so they will uh, use it to heal themselves. The Greeks, they used to use it uh, as a means of extracting uh, the evil spirits and the satans, according to uh, what they claim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ordered to perform cupping during the night of Al-Mi'raj. Prophet Sallallahu in the night of Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. Uh, after Al-Mi'raj, he came back with the safety or what will bring health to the soul and what will bring health to the body. As for the soul, then uh, he came back with the legislation of As-Salah. As-Salah is like a Mi'raj uh, for, the, for the spirit. It's as if the spirit rises up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and Rasulullah used to like As-Salah, being very comfortable with it, uh, to a point that he used to say, uh, O Bilal, bring us comfort by As-Salah, meaning call the Iqamah for Salah and bring us comfort. He used to find peace and tranquility within brain. As for the healing uh, for the soul, uh, for the body, then that is that he came back with from the night of Al-Mi'raj, then that is Al-Hijama or cupping. As for As-Salah, then Rasulullah received the revelation or the instruction uh, to perform Salah directly from Allah without any mediation not even the mediation of the angel Jibreel uh, alayhi salatu was uh, As for cupping, then Rasulullah sallam received it and was ordered to do it, to perform it through the angels that were in the heaven. And this shows that the angels love the ummah, the nation of Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam, and wish good and safety and security for this ummah that is because it is the best ummah that will ever raise for mankind and because the prophet of this ummah is the best prophet. The Sheikh said that the cupping is basically uh, taking from, uh, uh, basically extracting and these, uh, uh, these uh, cups that are used uh, that, to, to perform cupping uh, it's called uh, the mehjama or the tool or instrument for cupping and the word mehjam also or mehjama could be used for actually the razors the razors or the blades that are used to open to make the openings in the body that is because al hijama or cupping is of two types uh, cupping nah. So the cupping is of two types, a type that is soft, uh, that is uh, known from the, well known from the Prophet وسلم, or used by the Prophet وسلم, that is accompanied by uh, using the razors or the blades to, to uh, open up the uh, body or to make uh, small wounds uh, or small openings so the blood would come out. Uh, the other type of cupping is the dry cupping, is the dry cupping. Now the the uh, cupping um, that they used to use through using the cups uh, 
It's a leech. It's uh, it sticks to the body. Basically, they will put it on the place where they want the blood to come out. And this uh, worm, this worm has the ability to stretch itself. It has the ability to stretch itself, and it is very much fond of uh, sucking the blood. It is very much fond of sucking the blood. So it starts sucking and sucking from that place where they put it until it becomes full then they take it out now then they put it again so for it to start sucking uh, again so they keep repeating that uh, okay. 
طبعا دوده العلق هذه اذا شربها الانسان تكون في المياه الجاريه والمياه غير النقيه يعني في القنوات وفي الترع فاذا شربها الانسان مع الماء ممكن تعلق في حلقه او في معدته تسبب له نزيف داخلي يؤدي الى الموت وعلاج ذلك لان يشرب خل التفاح فانها تموت وتسقط The Sheikh said that this worm that he spoke about, that is the leech, um, it is found in the uh, water, running water, uh, sometimes in channels, places that are not that clean. So you might find this worm in there. So you might be drinking and by mistake you, you drink that worm and it goes inside your body and sticks somewhere and starts sucking your blood and causes an inside uh, type of bleeding that may cause death that may cause death and the cure to that cure to that if it happened is for you to drink the apple cider vinegar for you to drink the apple cider vinegar and this will kill uh, that worm also the sheikh said about cupping that the um, results of the cupping, uh, the good results of cupping may uh, happen very fast and uh, maybe swift, maybe uh, very fast. Uh, sometimes it will take only maybe 24 hours and then the sick person will feel some sort of uh, relief and uh, he feels that he is healed.